Yo me llamo Lucha y Tambo. Hello, my name is Andrea Espinosa, and I'm a member of Colectivo El Chaquiñán. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking about our project for training indigenous women between uh, endurance and resistance. Um, now I'm going to share my presentation with you. Our reflections are based in the images and experience of indigenous women in the Ecuadorian Andes. First, I want to talk a little bit about the other members of the collective. They are uh, Natalie Sefla, a student, a young activist, and an indigenous woman from Ecuador, and David Diaz Arcos, a photographer and a visual storyteller. We work together for around six months to build a shared visual narrative that reflects on the multi layer experience of indigenous women. We started by thinking about two broad points. First, in a post-colonial country with a long history of institutionalized racism and gender discrimination, how are indigenous women seen? How are they portrayed? And how is different from how they see themselves? Uh, and considering that these images will clash, um, how that tension is perceived and registered. The second huge point is why photography? Why are we using photography? Um, what do we see? How do we pick the way we compose a picture? Do we frame or compose consciously or do we click with all the things in our mind that we are not completely conscious about? As a group, we consider that it was an interesting experiment to talk about these questions embracing our own positionality and background. For example, who is an indigenous woman seen from David's eyes, a photographer, is completely different to mine, a researcher, and completely different to Natalie as a member of an indigenous community. We, by interrogating the way we look, we got to explore the ways we frame things in our mind. For our, our perspectives changed a lot. We saw uh, indigenous women as icons of resistance and hard work as people enduring in the, uh, inequality and discrimination and as people that experience pride, sadness, happiness and sorrow. Our eyes and our minds focus in a small fraction of what was there. Then consider the, the idea of photography. What what a picture means to each of us was very different. From, for David's perspective, it was making visible things that are valuable for society. And for me, it was about retaining and maintaining emotions, uh, feelings that I experienced when I was doing field work. And for Natalie, it was about memory, love and family. So our projects, they took those two points together, the way we see and the way we frame. We use our personal archive of pictures um, taken at different times with different purposes, but try to put the idea of indigenous women at the center of the exploration. At the very beginning of the project, we thought about the possibility of taking new pictures, but then COVID happened and we said like, no, okay, let's focus in the archive and do an exploration around this. We had meetings through Zoom every 10 or 15 weeks, and every conversation was exploratory conversation that had images at the, at the center. It was a back and forth of the things that we were thinking, but not only using words, but using images, either as a memory that we describe or as a picture that we were bringing to the conversation. So it was a continuous, open, and, in, and image-oriented conversation. Our shared exploration and open conversation are two of the things that I most appreciate of this process. We were aiming to collaborate and to co-create, but research is a very vertical structure usually, right? Because researchers, we have this idea of what we are thinking, our goals, our agendas, and to disrupt this dynamic is challenging. So it was hard at the beginning that everyone felt that we were partners. Sitting Voices, the Sitting Bodies, is a collaborative audiovisual art installation where the participants are not mere subjects, but rather narrators of their own stories. Building on my ongoing PhD research, we artistically explored the gendered, racialized, colonial, and geopolitical dynamics 
of violence and resistance of Latin American migrant women in England. Through artistic participatory decolonial methodologies, we aim to bridge academic, embodied, and artistic modes of thinking, sensing, and doing. Collaborators included myself, the visual artist Nina Franco, 20 anonymous Latin American survivors of violence, three Latin American activists, including the Venezuelan filmmaker Susie Pena, the British Caribbean sound engineer Mali Laurent Nelson, and the Irish Caribbean video editor Sherry Carr. Our first contribution involved the remote facilitation of survivor made body territory maps tracing the various ways in which the bodies have been affected by and resisted to violence across multiscolar specialities and temporalities. The art initiated by the participant after receiving a body size paper at home. They reflected on their own story and used their hands to draw the silhouette and map their feelings, emotions, and memories on that body. Adapting our methodology to work during the lockdown context of COVID-19 involved several logistic challenges in terms of getting materials and maps to travel across the city, but also ethical and technological ones. Crafting those maps by themselves in isolation required a different kind of emotional labor, which participants were trusted with assessing whether they were in a position to take on. Exatamente. E aí, o mais interessante foi que você está falando dessa questão do corpo e da gente não poder estar juntas para realizar esse processo fisicamente, mas ao mesmo tempo, as mulheres recebendo esse material e colocando o corpo delas em cima desse papel e estando ali sozinha no momento que ela vai refletir aquela pergunta e refletir aquela resposta e entender o processo dela é muito poderoso, mais do que se fosse esse projeto talvez num workshop onde todas estivessem ali e é, é muito barulho. Né? Então, na verdade, elas vão estar fazendo esse momento de silêncio com o corpo delas e, e com o material delas e com a mão delas e refletindo sozinha. E o silêncio tem muito poder, porque você vai, você está trabalhando com o seu corpo, né? Sozinha, quando ninguém está te vendo. E quando ninguém está te vendo é quando você é você mesmo, na verdade, né? Porque a gente é algo quando a gente a gente usa é, os labels diante da sociedade. Então, você é uma mulher latina diante da sociedade, mas em casa você é você. Sozinha, no silêncio, você é você. Não tem esses outros labels, né? Então, é, eu acho muito poderoso essa forma que o projeto se tornou, na verdade. Our second contribution is a reflection on the process and embodied effects of reenacting narratives of violence, coloniality and resistance. It included a short film co-produced between Susipeni and I and a poem written by Nina Franco. This contribution also speaks to the ethical considerations of doing art research with survivors of violence. We reenacted parts of the transcripts of interviews I conducted with survivors instead of using the original recording as a means to preserve the identities um, and confidentiality and guarantee their safety. The final contribution is an audiovisual cartography of survivorhood. The narratives of survivors are stitched together with the handmade body territory maps, co-creating an, an audiovisual installation collectively produced by Latin American women. Multiple layers of embodied emotions, voices and sensibilities weave together into a collective non-linear non narrative of survivorhood denouncing and tracing back how violence and coloniality are perpetrated, projected and felt onto Latin American migrant women's bodies. The film features the visual artist Nina Franco and has been shot and edited by Shari Carr. Through our art research methodological engagements, the relationship between researcher, artists and participants was significantly altered as the lines between these positions became more blurred as we alternated between and simultaneously occupied them. As artists and researchers, we have aimed to include our full selves within the various stages of this collaboration, inquiring about and registering how we have experienced and been affected by its processes and encounters. We are able to envision, explore and represent violence and resistance in audiovisual and visceral ways that grasped and amplified embodied effects not only on research participants, 
but also on collaborators and hopefully also on the wider audience. Hello, my name is Tiffany Ferry. I'm a visual sociologist based in the Department of War Studies. I've been working with the Rwandan photographer Chatney Kingslebo, who's on the right in this picture, exploring how a community photography initiative, the Homestay Exhibitions, run by Jacques and some of his colleague at the, colleagues at the Kigali Centre for Photography as part of that outreach and mentoring work with Rwandan youth, works as a form of peace photography and as a visual peace building strategy. My wider research considers the critical and neglected relationship between photography and peace building and picks up on the question, what does a photography of peace consist of? I'm working with practitioners in different countries that have suffered recent histories of war and violence to explore how images and image making are strategically being used to build relations, to spark dialogue and to create new imaginaries of peace. In the Homestay exhibitions, young photographers who have been participating in photo workshops and photo mentoring programs host exhibitions of their own photo projects in their homes. This is in a context where, since the genocide in Rwanda, many families have closed their doors to neighbours as communities where victims, perpetrators and bystanders are living side by side, have endeavoured and at times succeeded to reconcile but also struggled to rebuild trust. The Homestay exhibitions seek to reopen the doors using photography to share stories and start conversations on issues that young people think are important to Rwanda's present and future. Sharing images and starting conversations in the intimacy of their own homes, the young photographers want to nurture and encourage the dialogue within their families and between their neighbours to get people talking and exchanging about the issues captured in their photographs that are affecting their community. The homestay exhibitions take place in Nairobi district, northwest of Rwanda's capital, Kigali. Over the last eight months, Jack has been working with four of these young photographers and he continues to mentor them in person and remotely to develop photo stories and organize another round of the homestay exhibitions alongside which we'll investigate community perspectives on these exhibitions. The product now I'm making is about pregnancy not about, not about choice. Here in our countryside many many gays we got under 18 years old because of different, different many 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 reasons. Of course, the first, they don't have a time for touching with their parents. We are doing a lot of things, especially to to deal with the people. We are not carrying out the things we are doing. We are not doing the things we are doing. We are not doing the things we are doing. We are not doing the things we are doing. We are not doing the things we are doing. We are not doing the London, South London, is where I live and work from. As a Peruvian theatre and performance practitioner, currently writing up her thesis and operating outside this country's mainstream theatre industry, where I am positions me in a periphery of sorts, in the borderlands. To quote Gloria and Saldua. And to live in the borderlands, she says, you must live sin fronteras, be a crossroads. As I began writing about the process of making live performance collaboratively, I set out to find methodologies that could become these crossroads, sites that would resonate and engage the people I work with mainly the Latin American theatre and performance community, local schools and the traders from the Elephant and Castle shopping centre, the largest Latin American hub in this city currently being demolished. In 2018, when the centre's demolition was announced, it seemed intrusive and unhelpful to gather information through formal interviews or written questionnaires. Writing a song, however, embodied a process that could reframe the sudden erasure of someone's workplace through the lens of their lived experience. So I go back to place, to the loss of place. The song became a crossroads, an oral interstice, which could be revisited in performance in complicity with collaborators and audiences alike. When the pandemic struck last year, all field work at the Elephant had to stop. So I was lucky my proposal, Making Song, 
was selected by the Visual Embodied Methodologies Network to be developed in collaboration with Arts Cabinet under the umbrella of Imagining Social Justice. Together with musicians Eliane Correa and Camilo Menjura, we set out to create three iterations. The first song was Nikki. It captured the preoccupations, dreams and anxieties of a Colombian Londoner who sat her A-levels and turned 18 during lockdown, unable to celebrate or go out dancing with her friends. The song, which started as an individual journey, evolved into a hymn to second-generation Latin Americans who embrace their cultural identity whilst remaining deeply rooted in this city. Our second iteration was Elephant, a score commemorating the closure of the Elephant and Castle shopping centre in late September 2020. Eliane, Camilo and I were determined our third iteration should be a choral piece with a strong visual component. The groups we approached in London responded enthusiastically to our call-out. However, as the pandemic reached its most critical peak last winter, it became increasingly difficult to do what we wanted, to work locally. Instead, a series of fortuitous coincidences made me reach across the sea to find Lucha y Tambo, a cultural organization based in the southern outskirts of Lima, dedicated to promoting social transformation through the arts and culture. Their main tools for change are the drums. Embedded in the following video is a song we recorded remotely from London. We've also called it Lucha y Tambo. Soy Larissa Domínguez, tengo 20 años. Mi nombre es Diego Ruiz, tengo 20 años. Ana Martínez, 16 años. Ernesto, 19 años. Soy Luis Ernesto. Pedro Adrián. Mucho estamos mi familia. Son mi familia. familia y van a ser mi familia siempre. Este le dio un sentido a mi vida. Te, te cambia la vida. Llegó en el momento quizás en el que más lo necesitaba. Parte importante de mí y de lo que soy hoy en día. Pues. Te hace crecer como persona también. Todos dan algo de, de ellos y te llenas con eso. O sea, creo que Lucho y Tambo es un deber que tenemos con, con la gente, con, con el país. Qué grandioso. Me jode, me molesta mucho que en la vida exista para quienes tienen dinero y para quienes no tienen dinero. Lucho Tambo es rebeldía, Lucho y Tambo es, es, es todo. todo. Soy Godila, no tengo freno. 